So guys, I know that you've been hearing about challenges with real estate values and concerns, and you might not want to buy a piece of real estate only because you have concerns about today's market and what might be happening in today's market. Well, I just want you to be aware of something. And Bruce and I were chatting and he said, you know what, Lou? He said, the house, the original house that my mom and dad bought, he said, do you know how much that has gone up? And I said, no, Bruce. And he started telling me. And then we one thing led to another and he researched another property. So I'm going to let Bruce tell you what happened to the real estate values of the two childhood homes that he grew up in. Actually, uh, my daughter is coming back from Washington State to visit me for my 79th birthday next week. And so I was kind of thinking, well, maybe it'd be interesting to, to show her some of the houses I grew up in. And I started researching and I went, holy cow. So I made some slides. So this is a house that my parents bought when I was like five years old. And uh, they paid uh, a grand total of $7,000. In, 19 in 1950. I was five, six years old right then. Okay. And uh, I looked, was looking at it and it recently sold, like in October last year, for $1.6 million. And tell them where that was. And that, well, if you go to the next slide, they can see where it was. It's El in El Segundo, <laughs> El Segundo, California. Uh, and uh, go ahead and click it one more time, Lou. And click it again. Guys. Okay, it's less than one mile south of the Los Angeles International Airport. And so uh, we lived in that house. I was first grade through the eighth grade. And then my dad got uh, transferred up to Palmdale to do uh, with Douglas because he worked for Douglas. So we rented a house up there for, uh, for a year. And then when we came back in that year intervention uh, period, they introduced a jet airliner. And those early jet airliners were window rattlers. <laughs> Literally, they rattled the windows in the house. And so we couldn't stand that house anymore. So uh, we sold it. And I think they got about 20000 for it. But so they still made money with it, even with the rattling windows. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but and what if they had kept it as a long-term hold? Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Well, when, when I show the next house, we'll, we'll go, oh, well, this, well they should have kept the, that second house. <laughs> this is based on the $7,000 house. Yeah, this is, uh, go ahead and click it one more time. This is a, uh, inflationcalculator.com. And so 1950, $7,000. If you just took an inflation, it only would be uh, about 85000 to buy that house. Okay, so in other words, what would buy what seven thousand dollars would buy in 1950 would take 85,000 today. Yep, so even with inflation, this house went up dramatically more because of a thing called appreciation. And guess how much appreciation you get if you don't own real estate. 0.0%, right? You get nothing. <laughs> you get nothing if you don't own real estate, but you get two things right here. You get the benefit of this general increase in inflation, the decrease in the value of your dollars is really what that boils down to. And uh, the opposite side of that is you get a thing called appreciation. And with the demand for real estate today, and with the fact that they're, they're just not making enough of it, they're not building enough of it for the demand. And when you factor in all these uh, 
legal aliens coming into the country on top of the illegal aliens, or some people call them migrants, coming into the country. They'll think about the, the fact that they need housing as well, don't they? So definitely these are considerations to take into account when we are looking at the future of real estate for you